everybody, Mike Iaconelli here, back out in the shop with another great tip slash technique for you today. And I've got a good one for you today, and we're going to be talking about the chicken crawl, aka the chicken rigged crawl. The chicken crawl. Um, if you've watched some of my other in the shops, you know how much I have felt fallen in love with the traditional chicken rig. And the chicken rig is basically the best way I can describe it. It's a weedless way to Nico rig a straight tail worm. And if you've watched some of my videos, you've seen a lot of the success that I've had using the Berkeley Powerbait Flute Worm in the chicken rig technique. Great bait, has a unique action, it's weedless, it's snagless, catches a ton of fish. But this shop is the chicken crawl or the chicken rigged crawl. And it's a little bit of a different shape, but it has a lot of the same great action and features and benefits of the regular chicken rig. So I'm gonna flush all that out for you today. All right, let's start with the hook. And in, on this technique, the chicken crawl, we're gonna use the same style hook that we use for regular chicken rig fishing. And my favorite hook without a doubt for these techniques is the VMC Finesse Nico hook. You know, generally when I'm using that straight tail worm, that flute worm style bait, I'm using a number one or a one-aught or even a two-aught for those bigger straight tail worms. But because we're going to be chicken rigging a crawfish, I want you to use those little bit smaller sizes of the VMC Finesse Nico. The number one and number two are perfect for the three and four inch crawfish. The number one and number two, perfect for the three and four inch crawfish, okay? So VMC, Finesse Nico hook, and remember, that Nico hook, this is the reason this technique is so good. When you hook them on this hook, you don't lose them. I'd give it like a 99.9, 99.8% that when you hook them, you land them. And it's because of the style of that hook, right? Look at that VMC Finesse Nico. It's, it's not a straight shank. It's not a wacky rig hook. It's sort of a cross between the two of them. Um, and the other thing I love about this hook is it has these two little pieces of fluorocarbon, real heavy gauge fluorocarbon. And they're gonna act, and, and it's right up on the top of the shank of the hook there, they're gonna act as a way to keep that bait straight once you rig it, okay? So number one or number two, VMC Finesse Nico hook. Now let's get to the baits. Grab your favorite crawfish style bait. There's so many good ones out there in the market. Almost every company that makes a soft plastic makes a crawfish imitation, a crawfish style bait. These are one of my favorites. Uh, these are Berkeley Chigger Crawls. Uh, it's bait's been out forever. It catches just as many fish as it did 10 years ago. I really, really love these chigger crawls. They have a moderate amount of action. They look amazing in the water and they really do have a natural defensive position. We're gonna talk about that in a second. But the three inch or the four inch, let's just, uh, I'm gonna rig up one of the four inch chigger crawls for you today. And by the way, this is a custom color. It's a tackle warehouse exclusive. It's an Ike color called grunge. Love this color. It's a cross between green pumpkin with a little bit of faded chartreuse in it. Okay, so now we've got our crawl bait. Okay, there's our amazing crawl bait. And we are going to Texas rig that crawl on this hook, but we're going to do it in such a way, you ready for this? That the crawfish stays in a natural defensive position. All right, when I break, by the way, all these chicker crawls, 
when you take them out of the pack, they're locked in. I want you to unlock that action. So you're going to see those two little pieces of plastic connecting the crawls when it was poured. Break that off. Pull them little stubs off. Okay, we're going to unlock the action. And when you look at that crawfish, that chigger crawl, four-inch chigger crawl, look at it. It's got two big arms, claws, pinchers on them. Look at the way they're cut, like actual crawfish pincers. And if you've ever watched a crawfish in the environment, in a lake, in a river, or I had them in this tank, and I can tell you, when that crawfish feels threatened, it tucks its butt down, it tucks the end of its tail down into the bottom, which rises its head up, and the claws are in that defensive position. And it's trying to, it's trying to scare off or, or, you know, bite or claw at anything that's scaring it, right? So if that bass is down there looking at it, and it's a crawfish, it goes tail down, claws up, right, in that defensive position. So in this chicken rigged crawfish, chicken crawl, we want to maintain that defensive position. So when we start our Texas rig with that VMC Finesse Nico hook, we're not going to go in the fat end like we would with a normal Texas rig, right? Normal Texas rig with a bullet weight, I'm going in the fat end, the end it's supposed to be Texas rigged on, right? That's where I'm going. Or if I'm using it as a jig trailer, I go on through the fat end. But in the chicken rig, we want it in that natural defensive position so that the fat end, the butt of it, is facing down, right? So the line's actually coming through what would be the nose of the bait, okay? So that's where we begin our Texas rig. So I literally, I'll peel these pinchers back, get them out of the way, and I go in right at the nose of the bait, okay? Right at the nose of the bait, I'm gonna go in about an eighth of an inch, and I'm gonna pull it out, okay? So look at it now, right? It's backwards, sort of, and I'm always Texas rigging it, or chicken rigging it, so the flat side is facing down, right? The flat side on the chicken crawl doesn't have ribs, it also says Berkeley on the bottom, makes it real easy to remember what the bottom is. But we're going in from the nose. Eighth of an inch, pull it out. And then when I slide this around, watch this, ready? I'm gonna go past that keeper barb on that Finesse Nico that's so key. And I'm gonna get that number one or number two Finesse Nico hook and I'm gonna Texas rig it. All right, there we go. Look at it. We've got a crawl. Defensive position, the line is coming out of the nose of the crawfish, and that fat end is in the back, right? Look at it. It's nice and straight. It's Texas rig. It's weedless. I can throw this in brush, grass, under docks, around ropes, cables, metal. Unlike a regular Nico rig with an exposed hook, this won't get snagged, okay? But there's one more thing I need for my chicken crawl, and it is a weight. And I need a weight to stick in the fat end or the butt of that crawl. And keep in mind, you can do this with any crawfish, any brand. So the last component for my chicken crawl is a weight. And the nail weights work great for this technique. Uh, VMC has several different styles, but this one is by far far my favorite for chicken rig technique and the crawl chicken, right? The chicken crawl. And this is the half moon wacky weight. Half moon wacky weight by VMC. Comes in a lot of different sizes. I love the 16th. I love the 8th. They're great sizes. You can get heavier ones if you want. And when you look at this weight, it's pretty, pretty cool style of weight because See if you can see this. It's got a regular pointy nail section that has 360 degree cones, and that's going to help seat the, the weight in the plastic.
But on the end of this weight, on the end of this VMC half moon wacky weight, there's a half moon, or I call it a button, right? It's rounded. It's like a little button on the end. And this is, that nail weight is what we want to stick in the fat end or the, the regular side, the back side of that crawl. Before I stick that weight in there, I usually do one other thing just to help keep that weight in there. And that's, I add a little bit of glue to that weight. A uh, lot of different glues out there. I'm using this now for all this stuff, and it's the Spike It Fixalore. The great thing about the Fixalore versus traditional super glue comes in a little brush, and I just brush a little bit right on the tip of that weight. So once I have that, that Fixalore on there, I'm going to get the pointy end of that weight. You ready? Here it goes. It's got the glue on there. I'm going to make sure it's dead center in that crawl. I'm going to push it in there until that weight is flush with the back of that crawl. Look at that. You see that button that we talked about, that half moon? It's critical in this chicken rig style, right? This chicken crawl, it's critical that you leave some of that nail exposed. So even if you don't have the half moon wacky weights, which already have that button there, even if you're using a regular nail or you have another brand or whatever, make sure you leave a little bit of that nail exposed. And you're gonna see why in a second, okay? All right, so there it goes. The chicken rigged crawl, or the chicken crawl, is finished. And I, I'll show you just sitting in my hand why this bait is so special and why the fish go out of their way to eat this thing. It's unbelievable. It's gonna present this bait in the most natural way you can imagine. When that lure hits the water and starts falling, right? Guess what? It doesn't fall straight down. It actually has a little backward glide or slide to it, okay? So on the fall, it's falling almost like reverse, like a little backward. And as it's falling, because look where the weight's at, right? The weight is the opposite end of where you've tied your, your knot to the hook. So it has a little bit of this backward glide. As it's gliding backwards, what do you think those chigger crawl arms are doing? Dude, they're flapping and going crazy. And you get a lot of bites on this before it ever hits the bottom. I would say, you ready for this? I would say 30%, 30 to 40%, 30-35% of my bites on this chicken crawl happen before it ever hits the bottom. That's how good it looks on the fall, right? It's gliding backwards, the claws are moving, you fish it around docks, skip it around overhangs, skip it around fallen trees. Instead of it falling like a rock, it's gliding, fish eat it. But the other 70, 65% happen after this bait hits the bottom. Look at it, ready? Glides down, boom, hits the bottom, and that's how it's standing on the bottom. Weight down, tail down, claws up, in the natural defensive position, just like a crawfish with his tail tucked on the bottom, claws up, ready to defend himself. That's how that thing's sitting. And remember, because it's chicken rigged and not Nico rigged, it's weedless, it's snagless, you can fish it through heavy cover, you can fish it in open water, doesn't matter, right? And when you move that bait, I'm gonna do it here in a second for you. When you shake your rod tip, I leave it in place and I shake my rod tip, little shakes. Da, 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 da. What do you think that weight's doing on the bottom? It's pecking. A little bit of sound, a little bit of debris puffing off the bottom, right? A little mud, a little sand, a little gravel. Just like 
a real crawfish. So, so key, okay? So here's the cast. Let me show you this and the action, and then I'm gonna get into the, the rod and reel that I use. I make that cast out there to that cover or to the bed fish or around that dock or that tree or whatever I'm fishing. I make the cast, and when I'm letting it fall, this is the most critical thing. Remember I said it falls a little backwards and the claws are moving? Let it fall on a semi-slack or controlled slack line. All that means is when you're letting it fall, don't have a tight line, don't have a super slack line, let it fall on a slight bow on your line, right? A little bit of slack. And you can follow it down, you know, as it falls to maintain that, I can follow it down with my rod, my body, I can lean forward. If I'm super deep water, I can keep my bail open, I can feather with my finger to maintain that slight bow. And I'm going to watch that line as it's falling. I'm going to watch that semi-slack bow. 30, 35% of the time, one, one sucks it in before it ever hits the bottom. But once I get to the bottom, and I'm next to that dock, or next to that stump, or in the bed, I'm going to put that rod, I'm looking at that rod tip, right? I'm about 1 o'clock, and here it goes. Ready? Shaking in place. Look at this. I'm not moving it. Maybe pick up a little slack that I've thrown in. I'm doing these rapid little rod twitches. Just like that. Rapid, rapid. Not big. Not just rapid little rod twitches. And when I do that, it's activating the action of those claws. But more importantly, it's making that pecking on the bottom. Listen, they can't take that. They can't stand it. Are you kidding me? To see a crawfish defenseless, uh, 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 popping on the bottom like that? You think they're going to let that go? No, man. They're going to eat it. This is the chicken crawl. It's unbelievable. Real quick, let me talk about the rod and reel. For sure, for my bait casting guys that don't like spinning, you can fish this on a bait casting setup. Um, I would fish it on a lighter bait caster. I would fish it on a seven foot medium or medium heavy casting rod. I would use a low profile casting reel with a higher gear ratio. And I would fish it on lighter line, right? Fish it on 12 pound fluorocarbon, fish it on 15 pound fluorocarbon, maybe 17. You could do braid to a floor leader. That's for my bait casting anglers. But for me, I love, love, love the chicken crawl on a spinning rod. It's just what I love, okay? I feel like I have a little better control of the bait with this rod. And remember, that, that little finesse Nico hook is not a giant hook, right? So I, I think it performs a little better on a, on a spinning rod. I like a seven to seven and a half foot spinning rod in a medium action, okay? Uh, uh, this is an Abu Garcia um, uh, Ike rod. This is the 7.2 medium action spinning rod. I love it. This is the perfect uh, chicken, chicken crawl rod. It's a perfect chicken rig rod. 7.2 medium action. I like that 30 size spinning reel. This is the Abu Garcia Revo Ike 30. And online, my preferred way to fish this chicken crawl is light braid to a floor leader. Simple as that, right? The braid gives me strength. The braid gives me sensitivity, casting distance. The fluorocarbon gives me the action. The fluorocarbon gives me the invisibility, right? Gives me the natural fall. So I'm using 15 pound Berkeley X9 braid. I like the white braid because I can see it with my eyes better. Uh, they also make a bright green. The Jordan Lee is the bright green. So X9, 15 pound braid to a liter of anywhere from six to 10 pound Berkeley Trilene, 100% fluorocarbon. Um, I generally like the eight, but if I'm in heavier cover, the 10. If I'm in open water, the, the six is good too, okay? Braid to a fluoroliter, 
Spinning rod, seven to seven and a half foot, medium action, 30 size reel. That's a great way to throw this bait. Listen, if you're into trying new techniques, and if you haven't already tried chicken rigging, or if you have tried chicken rigging, try this little twist on it. This is the chicken crawl. It's gonna show that bait in a very natural pecking motion. When the fish see it, tick, 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 They gotta eat it, and that's that. Man, I hope you like this one. Uh, giving away another great tip for you out here in the shop. Stop what you're doing. If you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button right there, that red button that says subscribe. See it right down there? Hit the button, subscribe to my channel. We're gonna have great content every single week coming at you. If you're already subscribed, please tell your fishing friends about Mike Iaconelli Fishing on YouTube. We got great educational content every single week. Try that chicken crawl. Tastes like chicken.